Hello, welcome back to All for United WFC. We have signed in number five. They are at, they're just flying out at the moment. We, we did a show on Friday. It's like, oh, we've got two loans to talk about, another contract signing. Now we're sat here with another signing over the line. It's uh, absolutely chaos at the moment with uh, with Manchester United, but good chaos, and it's a good uh, good things to uh, to talk about. I'm not going to waste any more time on the intro. I just want to get straight into it. Um, and I'll just come to each of you, I guess, on initial thoughts when we first saw that earlier a little bit surprising I thought it kind of came out today there was no I guess pre presumption that it was going to be today but Charlie I'll come to you first on this one and just your initial thoughts when you saw that we'd finally got Lucia over the line you're on mute by the way um, yeah exciting I think obviously we knew we knew for a while didn't we there were murmurings and sort of mumblings that it was coming um, but I think a really a really exciting signing I think a player that will get uh, bums off seats and, and excite fans, which is which is obviously historically what we would like from a Man United team. Um, I think she also fits what Mark Skinner has always talked about wanting in a player. So someone that can perhaps um, fit in across a number of positions. And with regards to her, it's that ability to play across that whole front line um, and the options that she'll give us there. So, yeah, really exciting. Um, and I really, really look forward to seeing her um hopefully kick on in pre-season and then and then step out against Spurs in the first game. 100 percent Same question to yourself, Mark. And then obviously Barry, you can follow on from that. Just your initial thoughts when you saw that one earlier. Yeah, uh, it, like you said, Connor, it came out of the blue. No one was expecting it today. Um but as as Charlie said, we were all expecting it for a while. We first heard the rumours way back when we were playing down in Chelsea that the deal was done. Um I think she'll bring something different to our front line, which I think we desperately need. So I'm I'm really excited for it. Um, and I can't wait to see her in training and in games and roll on Spurs. I just had to unmute. Took me a moment there to roll the old cursor over. Um, I, listen, the guys already said it. Um, <clears throat> it was a shock for me. Uh, it was Andrew who sent the text through that let me know that that was going on. And um, like we said, it's, it's not a surprise as such. It's just the timing, I think, that's a surprise. Um, everybody's been assuming that Lucia's going to join us eventually, and she has. Um, and I'm really pleased about it. You know, as, as I've said before, I, I don't tend to get, like, massively happy or upset at signings because, you know, I, I have zero power over making those signings or those choices. We've always said it. You know, people get bored of me saying it, but... This is what you know Mark Skinner's gonna live and die by the people that he chooses. Um <clears throat> so as far as I'm concerned, she comes in and I'll support her as I do all the other girls and I wish her the very, very best. I'm really looking forward to seeing how she does and how she fits in. And more importantly, we've now got the right hand side of Spain on our side. So uh that should be good. We've got the right hand side of Spain, the middle of England. Um I'm just trying to see what country we can get for the left hand side now. That, that's a fair point, to be fair, actually. I never thought of it like that. Yeah, Spain on the right, England down the middle. Yeah, we need a left-hand side. I mean, I guess you could argue England as well, but, uh, you know, Hannah and Leah. Maybe. Yeah, the England absentees. There we go. We'll, 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 we'll go with that. Um, before we do move on, John, yes, I do hope your uh, your, your partner recovers from uh, from COVID there. Absolutely. hope it's not too, <clears throat> too bad for you. Um, and yes, Lanzell, very happy with the sign. And it is. We're, we're going to get into the window so far and a bit later on, but... Um, yeah, it is shaping up to be quite a good little window, this. Um, Charlie, I'll come back around to yourself then in terms of what you think she can add. What What is what is maybe different to what we've currently got there? You know, we're going to talk about it in a moment, the fact that we, it's another forward. But what do you think Lucia specifically is going to be able to add that's different to our front line? And you're on mute. It's in, yeah, no, sorry. I'm not used to I knew It's because my dog's in the next room and keeps barking. So I have to keep muting yeah. it and forgetting. Um I think I think something she will add that will be really helpful is if you look back at her historically is the number of goals that she scores because we've talked a lot about how um, maybe we didn't have prolific enough forwards across the board that we were perhaps relying on one or two um, and that's potentially a gap that she can fill. If you look at her last few seasons, she's pretty much got into double figures every time, which is, which is good for someone who's playing more often as a wide forward, although she can at times um, drift inside and do a job there. So if you think if you've then got four forwards in maybe Tooney and Russo and her and and Galton getting double figures, that's that's what we've been after, really. That's kind of what we've been missing. And obviously, it, it might not happen immediately, but hopefully with time as she settles in. Um, one of the things I like most about her, because I don't I don't know loads. I know enough. I think it, we're not on the men's game standard yet where you can just 
pop on YouTube and see loads. But I know that she's really talented as a winger. So she can stretch back lines really, really well. Um, and she also runs into channels really well and makes really good runs. And there's two things about those two things that I like and that I look forward to. So one is if she's able to stretch that back line with the intelligent runs and bits and pieces she's making, one that creates gaps for others. So other players that are trying to cut through them, so Russo or Toon. And the second thing is she makes a lot of intelligent runs. And we've talked, haven't we, that maybe perhaps we were missing someone who could do that enough um, to sort of um, pick up those passes from the likes of Zellum and Jackie, who make those good forward passes quite often. But our players weren't always really anticipating it. And she's someone who looks like she anticipates that sort of thing's going to happen before it does. So she's almost like one step ahead. So she's got a football brain. So she's intelligent. Um, and that can only be a good thing. Yeah, I'm going to throw the same question to yourself, Mark, but also uh, throw in Deborah's comment here, talking about you know preferred performances on the wing. Because for Spain, we've seen a bit of a mixture. She's kind of been down the middle a little bit. I mean, I, I don't quite understand the way Spain are trying to play at the moment, but you know they were trying to long ball it up to Lucia, which I thought was a little bit weird. But do, do you think that's maybe where she's going to be coming in for United then, you know, out on the wing potentially, and uh, what she can add out there? Yeah, I, I think... Primarily, I think that's where she'll play is on the right-hand side. And I've got nothing against Kirsty Hansen. I think Kirsty Hansen is, is one of our best players. In fact, I think she she's sometimes more... She has a bigger impact as a sub than she does a, as a starter. And, and I, I, I think Kirsty is, is brilliant. Um, I see Lucia, Lucia giving us something that little bit different. Uh, a bit of speed down the side. But she's also got... You know, she also scores goals. And I think last season... When you look at us, us overall, I think we lack goals from from the width of the, of the pitch. We rely too much on Lessie. We rely too much on on Tooney. Um, so I think she'll bring goals, uh, and I think she'll she'll. It, what's good is is that she can do that. She can interchange between going onto the right and into the middle, which I think we we kind of need. Even though I know Mark tried it last season it, it, it either worked or it didn't work with putting Martha out on the side and I, I just generally think we're going to she's going to bring a bit more width to us and, and push defenders out wide to give players like Tooney a chance to make those pockets of space which she operates so well, well in I'm, I'm losing the unmute button now <laughs> and, and Barry obviously I know you're a good uh Good old handsome fan as well. You're rivaling Benny for that, I think, as the as the number one fan out there. But is is that where you see Lucia coming in as well? Then potentially you know, off that right hand side and maybe drifting into the middle a little bit. Well, I mean, I'm struggling a bit if I'm honest with you, Connor, because I feel like everybody we've signed is going on the right hand side, which <laughs> is causing me a little bit of consternation as to working out whereabouts they're going to fit. Um, but I think, if I'm honest, it it sort of feels a little bit like the conversation we were having um, on Friday about how. You know, Simon Maya Letizia could potentially have different options what we do defensively. I think equally the signings that we've had attacking-wise do exactly the same thing. You know, we've, we've got options as to what we can do. We've seen Russo play centrally. We've seen, uh, seen Russo play right. We've seen Gorton play, you know, attacking left. We've seen Gorton play defensive left. Um, you know, I, I think what what's really happened there is that we've got some players in now um, who are going to be exciting and who are going to give us that opportunity you know she's 24 years old she's got experience she's obviously played in the Euros. she's scored in the euros um i'm just excited really to see which three marks chooses to go with first um and to be honest that that first game and all the pre-season friendlies um you know it's got me excited for them now you know because we've got the opportunity to try out some of those bits and pieces who do we want to do, do we put those three there do we put Kirsty up there? Do we put Martha Thomas again? Because she's been forgotten a lot in the conversations that we've had. And you know, she was absolutely awesome towards the end of last season. She just put everything out there on the pitch and she doesn't get mentioned. You know, we're all talking about should Hansen come in and play? Should should it be Leon? Should it be Williams? Should it be Clinton? Should it be Garcia? And the thing that we've got out of all of this is just listen to the names. Listen to the options that we're getting. And I think that's the big thing for me. We've got loads of options and there's excitement building up. And that's what we really needed after the disappointment of missing out um, on third place. So, so near and so far. 
you, you've, you've brought me on nicely in terms of the next topic then because it, you've mentioned right. something there that, that Skinner <laughs> that Skinner likes his, uh, his versatility, I think is the right way of putting it in terms of the players that he's signing. We've seen it with Maya coming in, you know, she can play centre-back, she's played left-back and she can play right-back, obviously predominantly. The forwards we're signing, you look at Leon, she can play ac- across the front line. Lucia, you know, can drift into the middle and can play on the right. So I guess, Charlie, just coming over to yourself for that one, is, is that maybe why potentially we've gone for a player like Lucia? Because she can play a couple of positions. Yeah, I think so. I mean, Skinner's often talked about wanting that fluidity and attack, hasn't he? Um, and to to genuinely have um, a group of attacking players that that can interchange um, quite nicely across the front line, rather than just having players you want to be able to do it, but it's not a natural thing for them be, to, for them to be able to do. Now being in that situation where we have, that's also really difficult to defend against. I think um, because we, I think we've watched United sometimes, and we've been like. Where's Golton gone now? Flipping it, she's gone to strike now, and someone else has come out. Now that must be hell to try and defend against when you've got players that are doing that. And that's what she's done. She's done that for Spain. She's done that um, for Athletic Bilbao um, really, really well. That's one of her strengths is that she can do that. So I think Skinner's going to be rubbing his hands together. Um, and obviously, there's lots of chat now about who, who's who, who you're going to pick. You can't leave this person out. What an incredible position for us to be in as fans. We've been crying out for this. For this number of players, this number of attackers, there might be gaps that Batman still need to fill in. But what an attack we're starting to build. Um, and such an array of different attacking talent we've brought in. I think sort of bringing her in, she's she's almost feels like a bit of a, a bit of a splash one to me. But if you look at her, you look at Leon, you look at Williams, regardless of what you think of them, what a range of attacking talent there. And there's so many opportunities there for different approaches to games or or depending on who your opposition are. And things you can change beyond just, right, this is not working. Let's just now start lumping it forward from centre-back, which we saw a bit last year because there was just not much else we can do. And I think just getting her in now as also a really good winger means you can stretch that back line. You can play a 4-4-2 if you need to. You can play a 4-3-3. There's so many options now. Like Russo and um, Moff Thomas might play as a two. That could happen at times um, because we now don't need Thomas to be playing out of position. And then if Thomas isn't starting, what brilliant backup she now is. To Russo, whereas we didn't have one before. Um, so I just think, from an attacking perspective for Man United women, it just looks really exciting. See, hearing your talk, I'm thinking we're going to beat Spurs like six or seven nil here, talking about <laughs> yeah. the, attacking, well, the attacking players that we've got. But I, I guess, Mark, same question almost to yourself in terms of. It's, it's it's not a bad problem to have, is it? Because I guess that's what we were saying last season. We were all saying at Chelsea, look at the players they can bring on. That potentially could be us, whatever you think of the players. We've got different, I tweeted earlier, different dimensions to our attack. Now, we, we don't just have the one way of playing now. Yeah, no, absolutely. Sorry. <clears throat> I think what's interesting is, is that for the first time, Mark's got, Mark's put his own stamp on the squad now. He's got rid of players, with all fairness to Kirsty and Martha and, and Fran Bentley, that he can't guarantee time for. And he's bringing in players that will improve that squad and, and hopefully take us to the next step. Off camera, I wrote down what I think will be <clears throat> his starting eleven, And I'm looking through it and I'm just thinking, oh my God, the players he's left off. The players that are not, I can't get into this starting eleven. For the first time, actually, it might keep some of the players on their toes. It might keep the players that bit more hungry. You know, I always talk, you know, one of the things I always go back to is, is what Sir Alex Ferguson used to say. He goes, if we win the league or we don't win the league, I will bring in players to keep all the other players on their toes to help improve them. The players that he's brought in, and as Charlie said, love them or hate them, they will help improve all the players that we've currently got. And look, it's not my headache that I have to choose a starting eleven. thankfully. I think there's, all one, there's one player that we can all agree will start most games, and that's the goalkeeper. Everything else is a bit of a lottery, which is great which is great for Mark because I think too many times last season it was the same 11 the same way of playing he's now got all these options Lucia on the right Lucia through the middle Martha Thomas it, it's just for the first time I am genuinely genuinely excited not only to watch the preseason games but to actually now let's let's rock on let's get forward let's see if we can because one of my biggest criticisms last season was we tried to score the perfect goal this season. We, I think we'll score goals from throughout the middle of the park. And that, for me, will help um, 
shorten the gap between the goal City, Chelsea and Arsenal scored because I think that's where we were lacking. So Lissier coming in, it's going to put goals in on, on the board for us, which is what we need. Yeah, 100%. There's so many good comments I actually want to try and get to in a second. But before I do, Barry, I'll come to yourself. Deborah, I can see your comment. I want to come to that in a second. Um, there's a couple of other comments further up as well that I'm going to have to try and refine again because they've, they've, they've got off the screen, but I'm going to come back to them as well. But Barry, just your thoughts on that then in terms of kind of, is that maybe why we went for Garcia then in terms of it's a versatile, another versatile forward and it's another um, dimension. I guess. I'm going to keep saying that word because it's just a big word to get into the show, isn't it? Another dimension to uh, to our attack there. I think so. And I think we've said it before, you know, People have said we haven't got a squad that rivals Chelsea, we haven't got a squad that rivals Arsenal, we haven't got a squad that rivals City. And the thing that all of those teams had was that strength in depth. So like Mark just said there, now when you're sitting down and you're writing your team, to be honest, last year, the only place we was really sitting there thinking, or oh, we could pick one or more, was in the midfield. You know, we were constantly trying to think, how do you fit that midfield that we've got the number of them into the system that he's playing? Now we've got that same problem if you want to use that word that same issue um with the forwards which is fantastic um i do still think we need another defender at least so that we can start having some of those headaches defensively as well um but having said that you know we can only do one thing at a time and he's, he's doing well with that so and we also know that zeller and lad can can drop back if they need to if we it's in our uh you know rotational policy that he seems to use so why not um, but what I did want to point out was just this one again. I know you put it up a moment ago. Um, you know, said it might take a while to get used to the English game. I, I suppose, really, I just wanted to throw out the word of caution. Um, you know, I wouldn't want to see people jumping out immediately if they haven't scored in the first couple of games. Um, I was say it, say it low so that people don't hear, especially that Sang if he's turned up. But I was watching the Chelsea documentary that, um, that was on DAZN and Sam Kerr didn't score in the first few games. Emma Hayes was scratching her head wondering what was going on and when she was going to start scoring. And eventually she did. And, you know, the, the story wrote itself then after that. But um, so, yeah, I, I'm just excited. I think it's going to be really good. And I, I think it is really important that when we're looking at our bench, we're looking for players that we know are going to make it, uh, you know, the right impact on the... Um, on the game really and i suppose that's where where deborah's point of mark needs to be a bit quicker with his subs and, and being a bit more um cleverer if that's the right word or, or make the right stuff i still can't go raston villa i'm sorry i've taken the strike i'm putting a midfielder on I'm, I'm, I'm gonna struggle with that until the day that i die um but he's allowed a few mistakes i, just, I can't we'll leave that there i'm gonna come back to that comment in a second actually but go on charlie just, yeah, just a couple of things. There's like one thing based off uh, what Mark Mark said earlier about the options we now have going forward. It, it also felt a little bit last season like if you nullified our initial threat or our initial game plan, it, we struggled after that. And now there's so many options, there's so many bits and pieces that can be happening that it's not just a case of, well, if we stop Tooney and Russo, they're done really, done for. And that's how it felt a little bit last year, whereas all these other options now. And also with regards to Garcia, obviously... I agree with what Barry said about it can always take people time to bed in, but it's not just goals that she offers. Like if you've watched her, and I don't mean the last two games she played in the Euros because she was she's like as my height, like she shouldn't be playing as the number nine. Did a disservice. If you watch her in the first game, that's that's a better assessment of what she can provide. But with the ball at her feet as well, running one v one, she's one of the best I've seen. Um, I think she's also incredible at that. So she'll commit fenders, uh, defenders and she'll do things like that as well. So it might be that she doesn't come in and she's not prolific straight away. But there are other things that she offers with the intelligent runs that create space for others, uh, with her agility, a 1v1s, that will probably lead to goals being scored by other people more regularly as well. Yeah, I tend to agree with that, um, to be fair. And I just wanted to go back to... Um, I've lost it again. <laughs> um, this comment that Deborah made about about the subs there are we see this is open to anyone who wants to answer it is this potentially we're seeing now that mark's getting the players in that he trusts and wants so maybe we will see the substitutions earlier next season because he is looking at the bench going oh well i you know I, I know i can bring you on in this position and you'll do this role and that kind of thing is that maybe now what we're seeing with the type of signs that he's making but who wants to jump in on that one yeah i i do i think that's exactly what it is i i i, I think it's 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 quite easy for people to go back and look through the squad last season and go, it was still Casey's squad. Mark didn't. Mark came in late. He didn't really get his stamp of 
stamp on it with all the players he brought in. And I think he just wasn't sure of some of the players if they could come in and change the game. You know, the two games that I always look back to is Everton away, Tottenham away. If we would have had, for example, a Rachel Williams on the pitch at that time, she would have slowed it down. She would have been able to influence the game. I know she was on the pitch, but not for United. So, um, she would have she would have been able to influence the game and calm it down and keep possession, which sometimes I think there's a certain naivety with us. I think someone said it before. We just loop the ball forward and, and hope for the best. Um, so I think he's bringing in a squad of people so he can make his subs earlier. Because, you know, Barry mentioned Villa. We were all upset with that Villa game. We were all upset with the subs. We were all, you know, but I think when you look at it, I don't think Mark probably trusted the bench at the time. I think now he hasn't got that excuse. And I think just, just following on there from what Mark's saying, I, I, I distinctly remember it's one of my first shows on here talking about trust. And that's the key word, you know, a manager has to trust people. Um, if they don't trust their players and the ones that they've got, how on earth are you supposed to, to, to put them on the pitch at all? You know, it's really important they trust them. But I think, like like Mark just said, because it's his signings, his people, he's going to trust them a bit more. My biggest worry would be is that if he trusts them now and he's trusted them over other people, are we going to be seeing a few more exits um, from the club? Because if you weren't, you know chosen first of all and now all of a sudden you're not being trusted because other people have been brought in you know are we going to see a few more people out but 100 percent, i think yeah if he doesn't trust the players he's brought in then we've got a problem but i can't see that being the case so he will absolutely trust them and again it'll be his squad his team and i look forward to seeing it in action i think it's good i think obviously it's it what is there five is a five officially confirmed now four or five isn't there five i think and we think there's going to be more so I think also how, obviously, you want a harmonious squad, don't you? Which is down to Skinner and his coaching staff. But you also still want there to be that element of, which hopefully there will be now, of if you're not performing as well as we want you to be, there's an Olympic gold medalist on the bench. They'll happily come on. If you're not performing as well as we want you to be, there's a Spanish international on the bench, desperate to come on. Um, so it's that fine balance, isn't it? But we need that competition. We've now got it on the forward line. And it's just... And I'm... The, the the current squad, from what I can gather, like Mark Skinner, they found him hard, but they 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 want to play for him, um, and it's just maintaining that balance, isn't it? If you want a competitive edge, but you want them you want them to get on with each other, and I think I think he'll be fine with that. Him and him and Martin Ho will have that sorted, I've no doubt. Hundred percent, Stu Barker. See your comment about what is United's strongest lineup. I am going to come back to that in a second, but I just want to keep on this talk in terms of the. It, it, can it just ask quickly. Go are you gonna are you gonna drop that bombshell on us in about ten minutes and say what's Man United's best eleven? <laughs> I could well do, you know. No, could, no, Mark's no, already prepared. Mark's already got his line of written down there. So, <laughs> so uh, I, I might come back to that one. Um, and it, he, he's even saying he'll make it easier for us. No, there's no making it easy for us. We'll do it the hard way. We'll uh, we'll put a full eleven out. But I want to come back round to a, a comment. I'm, I'm losing all the comments. I'm not doing a great job of hosting this. Someone. Um, it was something about you were talking about the depth there. Um, oh, that was it. Yeah, so I was looking at the, the Aston Villa game in particular. I'm, I, don't, I don't want to just single out that game, but I'm just looking at the bench that he had. Attacking players, Staniforth, Hansen, Fuso, Bo Risa at a push. So he didn't really have too many attacking options. Whereas, like you said, Charlie, there, if you're looking at next season and say we're struggling nil nil in a game or it's a tight game or one nil up or something, you're going to have Leon Williams, likely, um, potentially Garcia potentially Paris on the bench. You've got you know, Thomas as well, like I said, and Hansen. You, you, not all of these players are even going to make the matchday squad. So then you're looking at it as you know, potentially having too many options. And it kind of leads in nicely in terms of talking about the window a little bit. And again, it's, it's Deborah with a comment, but talking about potentially who is this, you know, in terms of how, how we assess the window in terms of who we might keep as well on top of that. You know, because that is another key part. Obviously, we saw it on his Instagram post when uh, when Lucia got announced, which was kind of hopeful. I and mean, I think we all kind of knew that Honor's sticking around for next season anyway. Um, how far after that, obviously, remains to be seen. But is this the club? I'm, I don't know how to phrase this question. I'm, I'm going to come to you first, Charlie, regardless. But in terms of it, do you think this is the club potentially showing their backing for Skinner? Obviously, every manager will have come in and they've got a list. And they'll have three names 
like three three to ten or whatever and it'll be this is option one this is option two three four so on do you think this is the club going okay we'll give you the players that you want and now it's on you know skinner and the players going into next season for to to perform really and you know do we assess the window by who we keep or who we bring in i guess is the question um i think probably both um you've got to assume all the players are coming in are who he's wanted and I know some people might then argue, well, why has he wanted this player? But he's he's got a soon-to-be world-class striker already in his squad in in Russo, so it might be that he's not after another Russo. He wants someone who can who is happy to step in and, and play underneath her. Um, but yeah, I think looking at United, like, it's a good window, but there are a, a clutch of players who are near the end of their contract or in the last year of their contract that I think it is vital going forwards that we keep at least some of them. Because I think if if we have an like a what's the opposite of influx? Outflux isn't a word, but you know what I mean. Like if we have if we have I many of the players we're talking about, we're talking about Russo, we're talking about Jackie, I think Vilda's on two years, we're talking about Honor. If they all go next summer, um that wouldn't look great. That I don't know if that's necessarily on Skinner, but for the club that doesn't look great. And you've almost got yourself a rebuild there. I can't imagine they'll all go. Um, but I think it's a bit of both. You want to keep your best players and you want to bring in players that are going to challenge them. At the moment, we've got a decent squad. Exodus, that's it. <laughs> nowhere, nowhere, nowhere near outflux. Um, I think we've got, we had a good squad already, a good squad, and we've made it stronger. Um, so I think, I think it's both. I think if you lose those four players, we're kind of back to where we started from because some of those, it will be difficult to get better than. If you look at Honour, so tell me who's better, Lana. Um, Russo, who are we going to get that's better? Um, but I'd, I'll anticipate most of them are going to stay this year is what I'm expecting to happen. Yeah, I'd be amazed if any of them moved on moved on this summer. Um, well, Honor's, but... Honor's pretty much said she's not, hasn't she? Like, she's put, oh, we're going to have a great time this year, so... Yeah, that was in re- yeah, that was the Instagram post I was referring to. Yeah, you, you, yeah. it pretty much confirms, doesn't it? That 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 Spanish link up on the right hand side. But Garcia might not be coming into start if Paris is coming in. I doubt Paris on the kind of if that does go through. Obviously, we're going to do a show when that potentially gets announced. I doubt Paris is coming in to sit on the bench, especially with the World Cup next year. Um, but Mark, kind of same question to you in terms of is this maybe the club then back in Skidder? And you know, as fans, how should we assess the window in terms of because, like you said at the start, it was a little bit. You know, fans weren't happy with Leon. Very, you know, unha- very vocal and unhappy about Williams. And it's it's picking back up again. The last couple of signings have kind of, you know, raised. I don't I don't know the way of phrasing it, but you know what I mean. Lifted the moods a little bit again. Um, to, but like Charlie said, if we lose, I'm not saying it's going to happen. But say Honor was to leave or Russo was to leave, you can imagine what what that's going to do. But so, how do you think we should assess the window so far? I was having this conversation with Deborah, just, you know, a couple of days ago. Because obviously we've all heard the rumours, we've all heard who's coming in and, and not. And when you look back historically, since the start, since we went into the W Sun, you can't obviously count our championship season because we kind of brought the team together. I think this is our best transfer window ever. Now, people will probably disagree with me on that because, you know, you're bringing in the likes of Rachel Williams and potentially Nikita Paris. I, I, you know, I'll, I'll accept those opinions, but... When Nikita Paris was leaving City, most United fans were calling out for her to come to United. All right, it, it's taken its time and, and she had a, a bad season at Arsenal, but she had Viv Miedemar in front of her, Beth Mead, Tobin Heath as well. You know, there was the reasons why she had a, a bad season. So I genuinely feel it's probably been our best transfer window ever. I think the club are backing Mark and I think they kind of needed to. You know, you go through the press and you go through the um, the, the tweets and everything, and you read out. We've got the work one of you know the six, the fifth or sixth worst financial you know uh, budget in in the WSL. That doesn't help. But you know, the club have, have put their money where their mouth is. As Charlie said, Mark now has to get these players on the pitch playing for him, which I'm sure he will, and picking up results and playing as a team and. I'm, I'm, like I said before, I am genuinely, genuinely excited about it. You know, we've got some class players. We really have, you know, Lassie, Tooney, Lucia coming in, Jackie. We've got some quality players all around the pitch now. Last season, Tooney, Lassie, 
Jackie, were they the three that everyone would, you know, put bums on seats, potentially? I think now you've got a lot more. And, you know, I think it's also very clever business on the club if they do bring in Nikita Paris. You know, it, she's a lioness. It, you know, it will bring more people into the ground, hopefully. So I, I think it's a, it's a clever signing. Uh, I, I see the, I see why people are upset with it. I get it. But she's got a great record in the WSL before she went to Arsenal. And if she can score goals, then that's what we're all crying out for, just to score the goals. 100%. And uh, Barry, just before you jump in on that, are we going to get a uh, live rendition, Charlie, of... Uh... A feverous fan. You said uh, you said you'd be doing it. <laughs> said you'd be doing it there. Are we going to get a live yeah, rendition fine. now? Yeah, I'll I'll whip that out <laughs> first game of the season. No problem. As long as we've got a whole row to work with, which I usually have, no problem. I'll be all over that. Look forward to hearing that. Go on, Barry. She knows we're writing that down, right? That's that's gone on the list of things that she's doing on the fans forum. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's been a tricky one for Mark because. We've said time and again, I remember one of the first shows that I did was about investment versus passion. You know, is it the desire for playing for the club or is it the investment? Let's be 100% clear. If Manchester United chose to, they could have pumped enough money into the women's game for us to have purchased virtually anybody if it was just about the money. Um, <clears throat> but that's not necessarily what's happened. So in terms of the budget they've been given, yes, they have they backed him and that's been proven by the fact we brought in five players. So, you know, I think that's really something they had to do. And I think the number, the volume of people that were getting were also important because as we've already said, it's, it's Stoney's team. It's not Skinner's team at the moment. So he needs that ability to be able to be his team. The problem that he's got, as I've said, is the minute he does that, it then becomes Skinner's team. So what happens this year is all on Mark Skinner. So he hundred percent has to, as I said, I keep saying it, live and die by the the, the, uh, the decisions that he makes. I do worry a little bit about the type of players. Um, you know, in so far as in a perfect world, you would want players that you know are, you know, the best or the top five or six in their position in the country or something like that, ideally, rather than ones that, as we said, are so versatile and could be spread out across the place. But equally, I think those people are generally going to be going off to places like the top three other countries where there are Champions League opportunities this season. So I think we were limited in that respect. But in terms of who we brought in, I'm really happy with it. I mean, you don't have to be, um, you know, what's his name, Colombo or Inspector Rousseau or Clouseau, whatever his name is, or Miss Marple to go searching through my Twitter and work out that, you know, I'm a bit of a fan of the Nikita Paris signing. I don't think that you can just write her off because she's had one dodgy season um at arsenal when she didn't really get the chance to play as much as perhaps she would have liked she wasn't the starter she was on the subs bench yes she got a couple of goals i still think her record speaks for herself you know she scored over 50 wsl goals yes that might have been a few years ago um but you know you're, you're still quite good you know i've got a set of knives in the in the drawer you know they're 10 years old they still cut you know you don't just lose it entirely they're just not as great as they once were so you know, take it somewhere, give it a bit of a sharpening, bosh, everything works perfectly again. And uh, so there we go. If Mark Skinner can be the knife sharpener, then Paris could well be the one to deliver the killer blow to the WSL. There you go. It took me a while, but I got there. That's where I was going. So, yes, they have. Uh, could they do more? Absolutely. Could every club? Absolutely. That, that's, the, that's the best analogy I've heard uh, in relation to that signing. You've got to bring that up when we, when we do do that. Uh, that show. Welcome, Ellie. Uh, I know you're uh, also very happy with this signing. Like I said, everyone's just happy. I think it's it's another signing through the door in in a very short space of time. You know, you look at the last three weeks. We've had, I think, all all five signings have been in the last three four weeks. Well, well, three weeks or so. It's been very quick, kind of one after the other. The club have been very efficient, I think, with the Euros on as well. You got to remember that. You know, play, we were talking about stage before that players wouldn't have want the want have wanted this distra distraction throughout the Euros. The fact that we're getting deals done early enough, you know, we announced a couple of the outgoings, a couple of the incomings already. So I think it's, it has been good in that sense. It's um, almost like they did actually sort it out early, but just, you know, didn't tell the minions, otherwise known as the fans, because, <laughs> you know, there was more important things to do, like keeping the player happy. It's almost like that, isn't it? Imagine <laughs> it's a, that. It's a fair point you make. Um, 
in terms of the poll that we put out earlier, um, oh, the, yes. vote for, the vote percentage is very high in one favour. Um, we tweeted out, is Lucia Garcia the best signer of the summer so far? 72% said yes. Um, and 30% obviously, well, 29, 28% said no. Um, does anyone disagree with that? Does anyone think that it's potentially not? I don't want to compare, I guess, compare players, but the one that's exci- I, I voted no. I will throw that out there, but... I don't know. Does anyone disagree with that poll that Lucy is not maybe the best so far? I, I, I voted yes, just because I've been so excited about this for like two months. Um, so it happening is, was a relief. Um, and also because she's an international, like she plays for Spain every game apart from the one where they lost, funnily enough. Um, but I think probably the more important signing was probably Myla Tizier. More important, if you think about our back line at the moment. Um, so I can see, I can see both sides. I'm firmly getting splinters sitting on the fence there. Uh, I voted no. I, I agree with you, Connor. I, I think I, I agree with you, Connor. That she's not. I agree with Charlie. I think probably Maya is probably our best, our best one so far. The fact that she turned down Chelsea and City to come to us shows that, that where the club is moving forward. I also don't want to put. Too much, too much pressure on her, on Lucia to come in. And if she doesn't, as, as Charlie and, and Barry said, if she doesn't do it in the first two, three games, the crowd will just get on her back again. And I know some elements of the crowd probably will, some won't. I just don't want the pressure on her. I want, you know, you need the time to come in. It's a new country for her. Yeah, she's got the added advantage of honour being here. Um, so I, I, I think it's a close second to me, but my Letitia is by far our best signing so far this window. Just before I throw my answer in, I thought I was, it was just about to bring, I was just about to bring that I up. That was Neil Diamond, uh, and it's not. So there we go. So happy birthday. I was going to do Sweet Caroline, but there you go. Um, this, well, as you know, Connor, I am the king of the poll. Uh, in other words, whichever button I push wins. And I did click yes, but I did spend a good two minutes, and I think I'll put it in the chat. I'm not sure. Because it was between those two, it was between my Letitia and it was between uh, Garcia. And I think the reason why I chose Garcia, exactly that, John. Maya for long term, absolutely. But Garcia, just being that little bit older, having been in the Euros, we've seen her play. You know, she's more for the now. And let's be honest, that's what we need because we're talking about these players that we want to keep. Um, I do worry that if we finish fourth again, um, keeping those players is going to be a lot harder. So therefore having someone like Garcia come in um, will hopefully, you know, really help us with that. So, yeah, I agree for the long term. You know, it's much of a muchness, really. But I think just for the purpose of this season um, and the fact that we really do need to try and hit the ground as, as best as we can in as close to a, a run of a Usain Bolt fashion as possible. Um, yeah, I, I went for Garcia and my people came with me. Yes. It, interesting, interesting. I said I'll give my reason. Like I, said, I just think Maya. Um, I think, like I said before, I don't think Maya comes in and sits on the bench. Uh, I think she's that good. She, I think she makes one of those slots her own, wherever that is across the back line. Um, and I also agree with that comment. Best, you know, whoever's got Millie back in training already. You know, we don't know the full extent of of what happened, but having I tweeted it the other day off the, I think it was off the Open Night account that you know having her back is like a new signing um, because. We've got another, you know, we know the injuries that we had, particularly at centre-half last season. Um, I want to move on slightly because he's been waiting a while, good old Stu Barker, for the comment that he, he, he actually said about 25 minutes ago. So I'm going to scroll all the way back to find it. Um, we'll try and do this as quick as we can. Um, I think goalkeeper is pretty set now. Um, you know, I don't, unless anyone's going to massively disagree and throw a curveball out there, but I think we're all going to stick with Mary Epps in goal. So we're not going to go too much on that one. And I think two, potentially three out of the back four are pretty solid as well. In terms of what you what you're asking there, Stu, what's your strongest lineup? How should we for, how should we do this? We'll do four three three then, because well four two three, that's whichever way you want to look at it, because that's the most common formation. Unless anyone wants to throw a four four two out there, but um, right, is there a debate? Is everyone, what fit? Is everyone fit? Yeah, we'll go, we'll go for yeah, a fully fit squad. Fit. Um, and I'll just come to each of you then. So if you want to run through an 11, then we'll go from there. So I don't know whether who wants to go first on that one. I know Mark's pre prepared for this. But, I've, done, uh... I've done it on the slide. Right. Okay. I'll go first. So it's Mary and Goal, Maya at right back, Millie, Tunkara, if she comes in, 
Honor at left back, Hayley Ladd, Zelly, Jackie, Lucia, Lessie, Tooney. Oh, I thought you were going to leave Tooney out there. <laughs> you, as you were going through that squad, I thought Tooney's not That's making this team. change it. You've just made me think about things in a completely different way. <laughs> okay, well, while she's thinking, I I'll go with what I put. Although, initially, I will say I was just going for like the first game against Tottenham. Um, so, it's just changed rapidly. Um, obviously, Earps in goal. Uh, Meyer, I put a left back with honour at left back as well. Um, obviously, I was going for Maria and Millie. You mean Meyer well. at right back? Yeah. Ma Ma yeah. <laughs> Meyer <laughs> right back on a left back. I think you said both left back, but then <laughs> we'll move on. Carry it, on. It might happen. I'm 40. I'm getting old now, Connie. You can't keep having a gap me for this. <laughs> Get age concern on you if you carry on. Um, yeah, uh, so Millie and Maria was what I was going to put um, in the in the centre-back positions. But obviously, if we're saying everybody's fit, um, that wouldn't be the case. I would go for Mannion and Millie. And of course, if Tunkara comes in, uh, then yes, I'll go with what Mark said. My midfield three... Um, it was Zellum. I was torn between Wilder and, and Lad. Um, so that's the only one that I didn't really have. I had Tooney just behind the front three, uh, which was Garcia, Russo, and Galton, as it stands. I don't think that Leah deserves to be dropped as yet. Um, because again, she was awesome towards the end of last season. So that would be my starting lineup. And then we've got those people on the on the subs bench as well. Charlie's gonna have a day, Kia. <laughs> I've, I've picked it just based on like who we've definitely got in the door for starters. Um, obviously, Erpstein goal, and then I've gone MLT, Millie, Mannion, Honor. But obviously, if Tunkara comes in, you have to play her because she plays for France centre back, so she must be half decent. And then my midfield would change depending on the opposition to be make this abundantly clear. Um, because I know it might shock and stun everyone, but I haven't put Zelly in and I hadn't thought about. I hadn't thought about playing Toon as a front as part of the front three. So I am gonna do that now. This is going off piste. So I'm going. Lad, who you wouldn't necessarily have to play if you're playing like a lower level side. Lad, Zellum, Jackie, oh, Garcia, <laughs> Russo, Toon. I've changed that. I've changed that literally as I was saying it. I bet that seems seamless. Well, that's seamless there. <laughs> that's seamless. Yeah, we wouldn't have guessed that. We wouldn't have guessed. But it's good. It was really difficult. It's good that it's difficult. That, that, that's why I brought this comment up. Who's taking our corners? Who's going to take any of the set pieces, though? <laughs> that's why I like this question now, because like I think, Barry, you said it earlier. If we'd have asked this question midway through last season, most of us would have picked exactly the same 11 in the same format, and you could probably predict roughly you know, the kind of team. Whereas now, especially if Paris and, and Tunkara come in, then you're looking at – I mean, I'm even looking at the back line then with everyone fully fit. You know, one of Ma uh, mixing words names together now, Mannion or Millie, one of them is going to be missing out potentially, or Tunkara. We have got way too many ends in difference. Hannah's way too many ends. The it's, well, when you look, it's when you look at the players that you've missed out. Hannah Blundell, who was brilliant for us last season. For me, Leah is our best player down the left, but sometimes I think we rely too much on it. Give her a rest, bring her on as an impact player. So when you're looking at the squad as a whole now, we've got, you know, as we've been saying most of the show, Mark's got options now. He's got options to impact and change games. I, I, I also agree with Charlie. Hayley Ladd doesn't start every game with, for me. So you can push Zelly back and then bring on Vilda or play Tooney where where Zelly would play in the middle. So it, it's, it's, I think for the first time, I, I said it before, I think we've actually got a squad we can all look at and go, we don't know who's starting. So for anyone who does the lineup league, you, you know, it's going to be who's who this year. You don't think, you know, it, it's just going to be generally good fun to try and predict he's starting 11. 100%. And, and John Fry, you're making up, you're splitting a person in half here, I, mean, I think. Uh, Golden and Leah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're on about the same person there. But uh, unless we've got another player that we don't know about coming in that you're, <laughs> that you're pointing there. Golson um, takes corners on the left and Leah takes them on the right just to help it out. <laughs> I, I don't we even know how. Have, we can have a back five of M's. We could play Mary, Maya, Maria, Millie and Mannion. 
What is that? <laughs> How did that happen? It's, I don't even know. I, again, I, I asked the question. I wouldn't even know who. Yeah, I think mine would be similar to a lot of yours. I think it would be, yeah, Mary Tunkara, if she comes in, would go in at centre half. Yeah, Maya on the right, Honor on the left, um, Millie T next to her. Um, then, yeah, your midfield. I think it depends on the game, but yeah, Lab would go in alongside. Ja- oh, this is hard. See, I wouldn't put Tooney in the front three. I'd have Lad, Jackie, Tooney in the three. And then Paris, if she comes in, starts on the right with rotating with Garcia, really? Russo down the middle, and Golson on the left. I think. I, I think you need your wingers out there. I wouldn't like to see Tooney in the front three again, personally. Um, I just don't. It could work. We, we, we don't know. Like we are, we debated this on on Friday's show. You know, we could go to a back five next season for all we know, or a back three, whichever way you want to look at it. The, the options that it's that word again, options. You know, with the players that we're bringing in, you could go for a back three next season and have Honor and Meyer as your two wide players. But with the amount of wingers that we're signing, I, I'd be amazed if we did that. Think of some players aren't even going to make the match day squad. Do you remember? The, do you remember those days when we were like, oh, we've got four on the bench today. Yippee. And two of my goalkeepers. Like, do you remember that as well? Like that. It's just insane, isn't it? Like, some players aren't going to make the match day squad at all. Do you think like Martha Thomas? Like, not that she won't, but other names we've not mentioned. Leon, no one's mentioned her. Martha Thomas, Lucy Sanaforth. Like, Kirsty Hamilton. If, Kate, if Katie like Zellum's not playing, if Katie Zellum's not in most people's match day, most people starting eleven. He's captain. And he's the captain. He's captain now. <laughs> I think You're what Deborah to... said there that you've just put up is, is massively huge. You know, it does have to be picking the players that are in form. This yeah. is the situation you need to be in. This is what every club wants. Mm-hmm. is the opportunity for players to go out there and to prove what they can do and to pick those oh, players that are actually performing. Okay. That's what a good football club is all about. Yeah, well, that's exactly that's the point, isn't it? it? You t- I missed you. I think you, you broke up, I think. I don't know whether that was just for me or <laughs> whether it was for everyone else, but you did break up there, I think. You're back with us, so it's all good. Um, but yeah, you're talking, like I said, you're talking about options there, and I think that's the good, that's the best thing, Charlie, when you're talking about who's not even going to make the match day squad. That's why I mentioned it at the start of the show, because you've got Lucia coming in. There's obviously hype around her. You, It's like I said, you'd expect her to start, but like I said, if you sign Paris, you'd expect her to start because of the, the, the wages you'd imagine she's coming in on. You don't sign a player like Paris to stick her on the bench. And like I said, I think what I like with these signings, particularly if Paris comes in as well, but you're looking at Leon as well. Players, I think somebody said this on the show a couple of weeks ago, players that have got a point to prove. You're looking at Leon, you know, trying to prove a way. In, I know she's highly rated over in Canada, but, you know, trying to force a way, you know, even more into the Canadian squad. You know, she's coming back to prove herself in the WSL. Didn't fully work out at West Ham. you got Paris, you know, wants to stake a claim for the for the World Cup next season. You know, for England, so she's going to be on, you know, pushing next season as well. And you're looking at Garcia, new league for her coming over, bit of a point to prove almost to show, you know, look at the kind of player I am coming in alongside on the side with Honor as well. So it's not like she's coming in on her own. She has got that connection there as well. So it it is exciting, isn't it? I think it's uh, that's the one word I think I've got from today. It's uh, excited and kind of optimistic, I guess is the word. And- but Maya's going to prove herself higher up as well. Because she's going to want to get into the, you know, into the team and, and to ensure she's got her place. As will Grace Clinton, you know, someone who's not mentioned much at all. She's been brought in. She's not even mentioned yet, you know. And we know that she's capable of doing the stuff. So this is the entire point, Connor. We've just got so many options, so many players, and we shouldn't be scared of that. We shouldn't be scared of that. that that's exactly it. And you know, that point there, we'll have a good bench. And you know, what Stuart's saying, we'll, we've actually. Whether you agree with the signings or not, we have got a bigger squad now. Um, it makes me a little bit... I'd be amazed if we don't... We might see another outgoing. I'd be amazed if we don't, um, whether it's a loan or something. Because um, I think you can have options, but I think at the moment we've maybe got too many, particularly on the right, um, because you, we're potentially going to have five players there. So maybe. Um, and yes, John. <laughs> More options than at a buffet. You get the same thing at a buffet. Like, it's that old Peter K joke, isn't it? It's just the same table with mirrors, and you just keep having the same thing over and over. Um, I want to move it on slightly, then, obviously, because we're coming up towards the end of the show. Um, there's been loads of people watching, loads of comments. I absolutely really enjoyed the the uh, discussion on Garcia and the transfer window so far. Um, and before we do move on, actually, Andy, I missed your comment there. Front four of Garcia. There's just so many names. 
yeah. Like I said, pick pick your three or four from the good luck to Mark Skinner on the first game of the season. That's all, that's all I say, especially if some of these have a good preseason. Um, he's gonna get pelters, whatever happens. How's this player not playing? Why is this player playing? The joys, the joys. I can't wait. That's why that's why he's manager, that's why he's in charge there. But I just want to move it on because it's a it's a we've played, we've mentioned it throughout the show a little bit, but we've not actually done a discussion on this. Obviously, Katie Zellam got a new contract last season season for the hour, last week um a two-year extension uh you know I'm staying at the club so i'll just come to each of you with kind of your, your your thoughts on that and if there was any surprise in there um it's a little bit i guess the only downside i guess you could say was a little bit late from the club it was a little bit you know after the you know all the contracts ended at a certain point and we've only just announced it but charlie coming to yourself first night are you surprised she signed an extension or are you you kind of happy that she's sticking with us for a couple more years um, no, not surprised at all. I'm really glad that they've kept her. They've kept her on. Um, I think she's an important player for us. Um, there's all sorts that she can offer. Um, I think she leads. Obviously, we know I'm a fan of her. I think she leads really well. I think you can see that in how the players react to her. Um, we've also seen a couple of times live how she copes with the players and the management when when the game's not going as perhaps both sides of that would like. She's she's she deals with that really well. I think as a footballer, she offers so much. I think she knows. Uh, when to pick the game up, game up, when to slow it down a little bit. She's a phenomenal set piece taker, um, and she's more than done her part this last season um, with the goal contributions. Particularly when you consider, and she's she's played a little bit all over really, and, and a lot of the time outside of her comfort zone. Um, and I know, I know for some reason she's divisive, but for me, um, I think she has so much to, like as isolated as a footballer. I think she has a lot to offer and I think she very clearly has the dressing room as well, which is really important. The the, the the captain doesn't necessarily have to be the best player on the pitch. And quite often for any Man United side, that's not been the case. It needs to be someone who can unify the coaching staff and the players and lead by example with regards to how hard they work. And I think that is her um, in a nutshell. Yeah, same question to yourself, Mark, and then obviously Barry, follow on from that one. Uh, I think it's great news for the club. Uh, again, like Charlie, I'm a massive fan of Zelly. I think she, the dead balls, I think she's probably the best in the WSL for me, the dead ball situations. You know, we you know, we can talk about, you know, scoring from corners and, and all of those things, but penalties, free kicks, she's, she's really good. And she's also a Manchester girl, which is important to have in the, I think it's important to have in the dressing room. Someone who understands the club, the ethos, what it means and what it stands for. So I'm I'm overly happy. I am really happy about it. I, I think um, will she start every game next season? It, you know, it's a question that only Mark can can answer that for us. I think she'll start most, but overall, it, it, it's a brilliant, brilliant bit of business for United to keep her there for another couple of years, um, and to give us that you know level of step stability with the middle of the park with Katie. I think there's other players around her that you could potentially not play every game like like we mentioned before, like Haley Ladd. But I think Jack uh, sorry, Katie starts most games for me. Just because of what she brings on the pitch. I think you're right. I think to me, I mean we we spoke uh, when we did the show about Katie specifically, um, about how important she was to the club. Um, and how she's the captain because she's the leader, and we mentioned how a leader is is somebody who people want to follow, and she very much has that. You know, she has that with the old dressing room. I think the key for Katie um, is going to be if she gets that with the new dressing room as well, uh, with the new players. And I have absolutely zero reason to believe that that won't be the case because obviously all of the old players will still follow her and and still want to to run through brick walls for her as well. So. I think it's fantastic. I think Ella Toon extending her contract was big. Um, but I think when your captain extends the contract, when we are on a precipice, seems like too, too emotive language. But when we're at a, a crossroads, there we go, a bit of a crossroads as to where we could go. I think Katie signing the contract was huge because it, it sent out the message to everybody. I'm here for two years. You know, I'm not going anywhere the year after next, whether we're Champions League or not. You know, I'm in it for the long haul. And <clears throat> I think that's what you need. You need that commitment. Um, and the fact that we've got that from Katie, I think, is 
is massive. I don't need to talk about her skills. We've done that before. Charlie's just mentioned it. Mark's mentioned it. I think it's fantastic. And uh, I think actually, um, I don't know if you just put this one up, Connor, or not, but no, that's it for me. She epitomises what Man United stands for. You know, she's there. She's loyal. She she fights for the badge. She fights for the players that are with her, um, just like Tooney does. And to be honest with you, I think those those signings, those extensions of contracts are huge. And those are the things I think that are going to be really important when it comes to keeping people like Alessia Russo when when her contract's running down. She's going to need those people. And, you know, you've got Ella Toon as her best friend and, and Katie Zellum, who's the, the captain that she's followed. And I think as long as you've got those people in both ears, um, then that will drown out any other noise around her. 100%. You, you summed it up perfectly. It's, a, it's an analogy that I always use now. You know, a captain, someone or a leader is someone that you want to follow. And clearly those girls will follow her. Um, they clearly, you know, she's well liked in the dressing room and, and that's a good thing there. And, you know, Andy's talking about, you know, with the depth and defence, Jade Moore. Of, of Jade, I forget we have Jade Moore as well for, <laughs> for next season as well. That's another player to More choices. <laughs> oh, you have to get a pun in there somewhere, don't you? <laughs> but yeah, you're talking about, you know, Zellan last season was obviously dropped you know, she played the holding role at times, which again, I don't think is her best position. And she played centre half, which obviously clearly isn't her best position either. So, and yeah, she played centre back when she was needed and did quite well there, to be fair, considering that's not her position. She did actually really well in that game. Yeah, and I actually thought in that game at West Ham, I actually thought she was the player of the match for us mm. because it was, a, it was a horrible night to play football in. And mm. it looked like to me she played there for most of the career. She, she just was calm and cool on the board. And that's what she brings, that calmness. While sometimes you've got the youth around her who just want to bump the ball forward at a million miles an hour and, and hope it breaks. KT is one of those people that can dictate play. But, uh, you know, you go back to her in the championship season where she was played as an attacking midfielder. That, for me, is her best position where she can rove and roll and, and, and get and pick up the ball in spaces and, and make those passes. Because... Jackie is a great passer, there is no doubt about it, but I also think Katie is a close second to to Katie, uh, to Jackie on her passing ability. Um, so for me, it, it's a win-win for, for the club, it's a win-win for Katie, it's a win-win for most people, actually, when you look at the bigger picture. 100%, and we're actually going to run out. I think, I can't remember who messaged me, it might have been John the other day, talking about you know, who's going to be the last kind of original, you know, OG left in, in the United Women's squad because we're, there's not that many left now when, you, when you're looking at the team. So I think, is there five or six? I think Mark's counting it now, I can see it. I think there's six, I think, if my maths are not, not mistaken. <laughs> if my maths are not mistaken, because you know, you've got Katie, what's Millie. Ella, Millie. Tooney, Golson, Hanson. Yeah, that's it. Rambo. Counter. So yeah. Five, six, yeah. So, yeah, and 100% on that, further forward. Uh, you know, in, in games against your lower opposition, like your, your Liverpools, um, I think you can you can play her in the, in the defensive midfield role because you're not going to be so under pressure. Um, but, yeah, in, certainly in the in the bigger games. But, like we said, we've got options. Like we mentioned Jade Moore there as well, another player. Um, just before we look to wrap up then, um, I just want to ask each of you in terms of I know that we've mentioned some of the youngsters, but a player that has gone out on loan, obviously Carrie Jones um, uh, has gone out. And I'd just come to each of you on your thoughts on that. Obviously, gone, gone over to Leicester. Um, do we think that's a good move for her? Um, and kind of what do we expect from her coming back potentially next season? Because if she has a really good loan, you know, that WSL as well, you know, throw that into the mix, she could come back and be pushing, you know, that's another forward then potentially added to the mix. Don't want to hear. Um, I I think it's a really good move. I'm I'm glad it's a WSL side. I think it wouldn't have helped us so much if it was a if it was a Championship side. I'm pleased it's Leicester. I think Lydia Bedford's quite good um, with what she's got. I think she'll play a lot of the time, and I think Leicester are a team that's going to be under the cost quite a lot. So she's going to learn a lot about herself and about fighting. And um, from <clears> that, I think rather than going to maybe a club where she's going to play a little bit of a bit part, but maybe just a bit more than she would have at Man United. Um, I think it's a really, really good move for her. And I think it's a blooming good signing for Leicester as well. Um, what, what a good cue that is. Um, so really pleased. I think she showed bits and pieces of promise for us. Um, and I think it will do her the world of good going to another WSL side playing week in, week out. And it's exciting to see what she'll bring when she when she comes back. Um, 
for me, I agree with exactly what Charlie said. It's a win-win for the club. It's a win-win for Ch uh, for Carry. It's a win-win all around. Um, it gives her the experience. It gives her minutes. And it brings her back, potentially, a, a better player. So, when you look at... We've sent um, Ivana out on loan. We're sending Carry out on loan. These are, these are good things for these players because they desperately need minutes and not five minutes or ten minutes here. They desperately need 90 minutes constantly under their belt so it's a great move for Carrie she has a lot of pressure on her obviously because she plays for Wales first and you know she plays for Wales so she has to have those minutes because I'm sure she wants to carry on playing for Wales so for me it, it's, it's a great move and hopefully she does well she won't be able to play against us when we play lessons so that's a good thing um but I wish her all the best because she needs those minutes because I really do like her as a player Yeah, I mean, we mentioned um, Tara Bourne on Friday, um, you know, and I'd said how I was a little bit disappointed that she was in the championship again. Um, and I think there is a difference, you know, quite often you see, you know, United will send people in the men's side to the championship and that, that's a good level there. I think there's a big difference sometimes in the jump between the championship in the women's game and the WSL. Um, and so I think it's really important that we, we have our players that are on the cusp of, of starting for us um, playing at WSL club. So having her at Leicester, I think, is going to be massive. Um, and I think that tells us that she definitely has the potential um, to come back next season and, and be an option for Mark. And we'll know for sure whether or not you know she's going to be um, a Man United player, or, or if we need to move her on at that point, because she'll be able to cut her teeth, she'll have the opportunity to make mistakes, she'll have the opportunity to learn. You know, Leicester have got a fantastic setup with what they're trying to do, so I think actually, you know, there's a lot there to be to be positive about for Carrie. Um, you know, I, I think it's important they get minutes, as we've said, it is important they go on loan because they're they are playing, and it will probably still be a higher level than the reserve leagues that they've been in. Um, but yeah, I, I think. <clears throat> For me, of all the ones that we put out on loan, Fuso obviously going to Germany in this one um, are the two that could be the most beneficial for us going into next season because it will be a higher quality of opposition that they're playing each week. Um, and that's what we need to see. How is Carrie going to perform against your Arsenal's, your Cities, your Spurs, your West Ham's, those sort of ones, you know, not how they're going to perform against, you know, Charlton or, you know, Doncaster Bells or anything like that. You know, we, we need to see how they're going to perform at the top. No, 100%. Especially a side like Leicester, like I think, Charlie, you said they're going to be under the cosh a little bit. So, Carrie's kind of pace and a hold-up play is going to be called. Whereas, obviously, for the Devs, very promising team. But because they're winning every single week, they're, they're, well, most week, you know, they're used to... They're all technically very good. Whereas, she's going to Leicester, she's going to get that chance. She's going to be under the cosh. She's going to have to track back. She's going to have to hold the ball up. She's going to learn in those other... You know, what's the phrase? Something to her... Strings to her bow, that was the phrase. Um, that maybe she wouldn't have learned uh, in the devs. Mark, I can see you from you with there on that one. Look, I mean the devs are. I, mean, I was we were lucky enough to. Well, I was lucky enough to watch a lot of the devs games last season. The devs are a great squad. You know they won the double, which is it has to be applauded. But Poppy's left to go to Scotland. Maria Edwards has gone as well. So they're kind of going to break up the devs to an extent and bring through the next generation. Karna has obviously left as well. So Carrie is too good for the for the development of the team. She's far too good. She stands out by by a mile. So going out on loan to a WSL side, and I agree exactly with what Barry said. The championship it's it's neither here nor there. You know, if if, if she's gonna want to go if we're gonna send her to a championship side, with in my opinion, I might as well have left her in the devs because the quality is much better. So sending her to WSL side, Leicester with Lydia Bedford and as Andy Slater said, and Willie Kirk there now as well. It can only improve her as, as a player, which is what we want. We want this next generation of, of youngsters to come through and to be the sort of class of 92, if we can, to bring it on. And and, and I think we, we can do that, sending out on, on loans and, and things like that. It, it, like I said, it's a great move for Carrie. 100%. When you think about like uh, Emily Ramsey, when she went off to, to Birmingham, you know, again, she was she was playing at a top level. Her problem is she's got to come back and displace Mary Earps. Um, <laughs> it's not going to happen. It doesn't matter where she goes. You know, she'd have to go on loan to Arsenal. 
for that to uh, to really be a, a possibility. So you know, you got to feel for her in that respect. But I think yeah, the WSL is where you need people to be. Yeah, hundred um, percent. We'll wrap it up there. Before we do wrap up, obviously, Mark, you've not been on for a, for a while, but I want to come back round to yourself in terms of obviously we're coming. I say coming up to the new season. I'm jumping ahead of myself. Here. We're still about five six weeks away, but obviously. Supporters club and everything like that. Obviously, I'm assuming is there going to be a bus? I imagine for Spurs on on the first game of the season, whenever that gets announced. Obviously for the for the date. And yeah, like I'm, I'm 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 pretty certain there will be a bus for both Spurs and West Ham, which is in the first three weeks of the season. Um, so we're in the process of trying to get prices and things, and obviously with the cost of living the way it is, it's it's not cheap. But we're trying to do the best we can for everyone to keep it a, a, an affordable price. Um, so, yeah, so with a bit of luck, hopefully there should be some news coming out relatively soon about it from us. Um, and then, yeah, then we're in pre-season, the first pre-season games next week for the girls. And then before we know it, there's Toulouse for some of us. And then we've got the league start and it, it'll come around quickly. It, it really will. And I'm looking forward to it. Oh, go on, Barry. So, no, I was, I was just, I've actually signed up, which is really good. So the supporters club, I got myself on that. They, they've got themselves a, a fancy new um, <laughs> online sign up sheet, which makes it much easier. So we didn't need to send anything by pigeon or, or even worse, the Royal Mail. So no. uh, that was good news. So thank yeah. you for that. And, and Barry, you were the first one to try it as well. So you were our guinea pig. So, and it worked. So that's even better. Ta da! There we go. Do I get a special badge for that? <laughs> yes, you can have uh, last seasons as well. Yeah, <laughs> love that. Um, I've also got to just point out, if we do this, if this happens, Charlie's going to have to do our Aviva Espana now, so probably best to... We're, we, are, we are actually looking at a two-hour show. Potentially next week, we've got a few ideas in the pipeline, so there might be a, a longer show next week, but we do try and keep it to an hour because we all have all got a... You know, I know Charlie's got her kids knocking at the door, <laughs> trying to uh, trying to get her attention again. So uh, we are going to have to wrap up. And I, I don't know whether anyone's got the, the answer to that very quickly. I don't think there is an answer. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go for it. Um, so the club have interviewed potential people. Uh, one of the people that they offered the job to turned it down. Who went through the whole interview process, they turned it down. Um, and so they've had to restart the whole process again. Um, because the person who they wanted, wanted it, but there was a family commitment that they couldn't take it. So they had to, they've had to just restart the whole process, which isn't great. Um, and I just want to say, um, I think John Murtagh has done a terrific job so far this window for us, for both men and well, women primarily, but also with the men, just, you know, just if I can ask him really quickly to bring in Frankie, then that whole saga can finish as well. And then we can all move on with our lives and then see what happens. But um, it, it, it's the process has had to start again, like I said. So it, it hopefully soon, ra sooner rather than later. No, 100%. We'd all like to see that role, Phil. But I agree with Slater's point there, you know. Would it have been enhanced by a, a head of women's football or anything like that? The, like you said there, you mentioned John Murray. So the deals are getting done on both sides of the club. And I think whatever you think of them, I think the club have acted better this summer. Um, and, and hopefully that continues. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the, the one point that we made before we came on air is, is that people wanted all these announcements before the Euros and the club were never going to do that. So the club have, in my opinion, got it right. They gave, you know, Martha her chance to say goodbye. Then they announced some of the others, Adrian and Leon. And I think the club have got it right. And I think the signings have been done specifically at the right time. So I think the club have got it absolutely spot on. And I agree with Andy. And I'm yeah. not sure where I read it, but I'm sure I heard Skinner actually say, I will tell you about that after the Euros. You know, we've got players coming in after the Euros. I'm sure that's what he said. So, you know, he's kept his word. Exactly. And you can't criticise for that, but uh, I'm sure people will find a way. Um, anyway, we will, uh, we will wrap it up there. Um, we'll be back on, what day is it? Uh, Wednesday night with the, the Lionesses match reaction show, England versus Sweden, obviously on Tuesday, Charlie, I know you're going and probably really looking forward to that. Um, <laughs> so uh, we'll be back for the Lionesses show on, on Wednesday and uh, we'll be back on Friday. Sorry, Charlie's put, <laughs> Charlie's uh, 
messaging some ridiculous things. Sorry, well, I'm not going to look at that while I wrap this up. But then Barry will be back on Friday if he's stopped what laughing <laughs> for uh, for the fans forum as well. Live from Scotland. Exactly. What, what, what more can you ask for? Um, there's been a lot of new people in the chat tonight. It's great to see and great to have the discussion. Mark, thanks for coming on. And obviously Barry and Charlie as ever. Make sure you're following the Supporters Club. I'll put all of that stuff uh, in the description if you are new. Make sure you're liking the video and subscribing as well. We are knit. We're on the way to 700 now, so uh, that would be greatly appreciated. That was a really loud whistle. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> oh, that's throwing me off. Oh, right, I'm going to end it. Thanks all for watching. I'll see you guys soon.